Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul. I am a nerd, and this is the October 2013 World Docs Virtual User Group Meeting from Attorney Computer Systems. I'm here with Mary Jo and Leanne, our humble and organized moderator, uh, to, uh, to talk about World Docs. Today we're going to talk about um, ethical walls. I love that name. Sometimes they're called Chinese walls, uh, but they are a way to block people from certain things. Mary Jo will tell you all about that. And I'm going to talk to you about how, uh, kind of a quick tip, if you will, to, to find out how to um, be able to search for hidden or protected or checked out documents without knowing anything else about them. So if you're a manager and you've got a lawyer that comes to you and says, I checked out a document, but I can't remember which one, uh, or I hid a document and I can't find it now, uh, we have a way to find those. Uh, but before we do that, a little bit of house cleaning and housekeeping and preamble and whatever you want to call it, in that we will show you the GoToWebinar uh, control panel that you're looking at right now. If you have this on your screen, you can get rid of it by clicking on this little icon here that looks like an arrow pointing to the right. That will cause this to slide off to the right and get off of your screen and perhaps keep keep it from covering up whatever is underneath, particularly my session. Um, this will remain on your screen when you do that, and this little arrow will change into one that points to the left, and clicking it again will cause this to slide back into focus so you can see it again. You would do that if you're feeling shy, but you do have a question for us, and you can type that question here, and don't forget to hit the send button. Leanne will notice that you've asked a question. She will ask it on your behalf at an opportune time, uh, if you have follow-up questions while Leanne is asking your question and while I or Mary Jo are answering it, just keep typing them there. Again, don't forget to hit send, and Leanne will keep asking your follow-up questions until we're certain we've got it answered. You can also click this button here that looks kind of like a hand with an arrow in front of it pointing upward. That means raise your hand. Uh, it's another way to ask a question, but this time Leanne, instead of reading your question for you, will unmute you and let you ask it uh, your own in your own words. Uh, so if you're not feeling shy, raise your hand. If you are feeling shy, simply uh, go ahead and type your question here. We're going to start with Mary Jo talking about ethical walls. So Mary Jo, take it away. Okay. A lot of times we need to lock down world docs for certain users for certain things that could be we want to... Um, have a profile group that is only accessible to certain people that, and maybe they aren't managers, and um, we want to lock that down. Or maybe there are certain clients that we only want certain users to be able to access, or certain doc types. There's all kinds of different things that we may need to get very specific on how we want to lock it down and how we want people to see it. So WorldBox, we have lots of ways to do that um, at different levels. And one of them is ethical walls. And what an ethical wall will do is it will do just what we were talking about, taking a profile group and restricting it to just one or two users or several, whichever you decide. So how we get to that is in the WD admin. So if you are a manager, you can get into the WD admin. And once we're in there, we are going to go over to security and to groups. And we may have talked about some different uh, things that we can do in here to lock down certain features of the software or to have certain users become part of a certain group. Uh, this is where you can lock down some profile groups. But we're going to talk today and focus on this ethical walls option. So if we click on that, we've set up an ethical wall already in here. And we're going to show you how we did it and why. And then we're going to create one other one so that we can kind of give you an example. But keep in mind that you can do this and get very specific on what you do and what you see. So this first one that we set up was a client ethical wall. And what we wanted to do was block Paul, he is a user, from seeing anything in this particular client. So I'm going to go in. I had clicked on Add when I first set it up. But I'm going to edit so you can see what I'm looking at. So first what I did is I chose which profile group it was. And in this case, it was the client file. And then I chose what client I wanted to block him from. So I have Scooby-Doo, and he cannot see any of the um, documents under the 00 test procedures. That's where I want to restrict him. 
So once I chose those two things, I said OK. And then I came over on this side, and I decided, OK, everybody's allowed to see it except for Paul. So I just picked the user to add users. I chose Paul off the list, and I said to block him from that client. If I wanted to also block another user, I could do that here. Um, and I can allow the users that I want to see it, um, because everybody's allowed at first, and then we start to block who we don't want to see that matter. So if I go over to Scooby-Doo Matter Zero as Paul, and I didn't really save anything in here, but we'll save that. So I'm going to go to Direct Access, Client Files, and I'm going to go to Scooby-Doo. And I am logged in as Paul right now. So I'm going to go in, and I'm going to click 00 to see that matter, hit my tab key, and it tells me that that matter is restricted. I do not have access to see Scooby-Doo the 00 matter. If I were to do a different matter, he would be allowed to go in and see that. So we'll choose the number 10 matter. I don't even know if we have documents under the number 10. We don't. But I would be able to get into that matter to see it. But just the 00, zero matter is what I restricted. So let's take that a step further and say that we want to restrict a certain profile group. Doc type. I'm sorry. Let's do a doc type. So let's go back into security, go back into groups. And I am going to go to Ethical Walls. And I'm going to create a new one. OK, let me get, I'm going to delete the first one first. Just let me get out of that. Um, just let me edit this and delete it. OK. So now we're going to say that we want a certain doc type restricted. So I'm going to add a new one. And for Scooby-Doo, I'm going to go browse my client table and find Scooby. We're going to choose our matter 00. And I don't want Paul to be able to see um, licensing agreements or licensing info. So I'm going to block him from just the licensing information from Scooby-Doo. I'm sorry, Paul. I needed to keep my other, OK. I'm sorry. We're going <laughs> My example is going to be to just block all license info type from all clients. We're just going to do that. Yeah. And so we're going to go ahead in and we're going to just say that for all client files, Paul does not have rights to see license info. And this would be helpful if you were in like the accounting profile and you only had like one user you wanted to see certain types of documents in that accounting profile. So across profiles, this is really good for different types of doc types. Maybe in the accounting profile, you don't want anybody to see the deposits. So you can block the deposits from that. So that's another example of how you could use doc type restrictions. In this case, licensing info, I don't want any of you know Paul or you know whoever I want to restrict to see licensing info. So and then again, I'm going to pick my user and say which user I don't want to see it. And we're going to go ahead and we will save that. Oops. There we go. I'm just like all off on this. Okay, so we've blocked Paul. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to save that security. So now we've blocked Paul from seeing any licensing types. Now, after you've make, made a change like this to the group security, we have to restart World Docs for that to push out so that those users no longer have access. So if you've made that change and you haven't restarted World Docs or that user has not restarted World Docs, closed it and reopened it, they will still have the access until they do. So be careful with that. If it's something you need to restrict right now, you have to make sure everybody logs off and logs back on or that you right click on World Docs, close it, and then have them reopen. So this is a user by user thing that they're going to have to do um, to get back in. So I'm going to go ahead and um, reload World Docs. And at this point, there was a, one document under Scooby-Doo 00, 00 Matter that was a licensing info document type. So I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to go to Direct Access, to my client profile. We're going to pick Scooby-Doo. And I'll pick the 00, zero matter, say OK. And now I do not have that licensing type document up here anymore uh, for that doc type. Um, it was called license test. And it's no longer on my screen. It just doesn't even show up. So it's secure. He cannot get into any of those documents typed that way. So you can see this can be very useful for different types of profiles, different types of restrictions that you need to get specific on and you can push that out to different users or groups. You can create groups that can be restricted as well.
Any questions or Paul, do you have anything to add? No, I think that pretty much covers it. I'm sorry, I stepped on your response, Leanne. Any questions? No questions. Okay. Well, very good. Well, that is um, useful information. Of course, it's something that your administrator sets up. So as a user, it's nice to know that if you have a need to restrict people from seeing a whole matter or a whole type of document because of something your attorney needs or something that you as an attorney need, you know, maybe you have a, 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 someone who's on their way out and they only need to be able to see these five matters they're still working on. You want to, as an attorney, you want to go to your administrator and say, hey, we need to keep this person from seeing anything but these five matters. Uh, very, very useful way to do that. And the sky is pretty much the limit as far as what it is that you can, what it is that you can restrict them from. Um, it, you have to be careful in how you set it up, but if you do it right, it can be very, very powerful. I am going to go back into World Docs. I guess I'll get out of this first. And I'm going to go back and show you how to, as a manager uh, or as a user, uh, some of these things would require manager access, some wouldn't. To find the things, <laughs> I hate to pick on you attorneys, but if, if you're a legal assistant and you have an attorney that comes to you and says, I hid a document and now I don't know where it is, or I checked out a document and I, I don't even remember what matter it was, but I need to find it quickly. Uh, there is a way, when you go into find, to look specifically at all the documents that have been hidden or checked out or protected. Now, if you're going to see which ones have been hidden or protected, you probably need to have manager level access to do it. But if you're just looking for the checked out ones, uh, you can do it just as a regular user. So this information is of, of benefit to both types of users, regular users and managers. But before we do that, let's make sure we've got a couple documents hidden. So we're going to go into Scooby-Doo. And we're going to find a couple documents. Of course, we won't do anything with those licensing documents because I'm still locked out of that doc type. Um, Mary Jo, make a note, would you please, to... <laughs> I just realized that means I'm locked out of all my licensing documents for, for our clients. Um, and I'm going to take this document here. Yeah, didn't mean to do that. How many times do you double-click on something when you mean to do something different? Just like that. I'm going to take this document right here, I'm going to change the profile, and I'm going to make it read-only. Now let's actually go a little bit further. Let's make it, uh, let's hide it. Okay. Now that means that only I can see it. Okay. And you'll notice that I can't really tell that I've made this hidden. So I may want to find out which documents I've made hidden, or as a manager, I just may want to find out what documents anyone's made hidden. You can go then into Find and use a special code, slash H, and search. And it will show you all the documents in that profile group that are hidden. You leave everything else blank. You select the appropriate profile group, in this example, client files, or of course you could say all. And then in the owner and its section, you put a slash H for hidden, and it will show you every document that's been hidden. Now let's take it a step further. Let's go back into Scooby-Doo. And let's take this document here, and I'm going to check it out. This is what attorneys or paralegals or anybody that's taking stuff home would do if they were going to take a document home and they didn't want anybody to be able to access or be able to edit it while they're gone. So I'm, I'm going to check out this document. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. I hit the wrong button. I'm going to check out this document. I'm going to send it to my local mirror. And it is now checked out. While we're at it, I'm going to take this one here and I'm going to protect it. Okay. Oops. Okay, so this one's protected, this one's checked out. Now, same thing, we go into find, we leave all the fields blank except um, the owner and its, and this time we can put in a slash C. Of course, be sure to select the appropriate profile group, search, 
there's all the documents that are checked out. Go back into find, start a new search, and this time I'm going to put a slash P, which means protected, which is another way of saying read only. We search, and now here's all the documents that are read only. Now this can be useful to you as a user to look for stuff that you have marked read only, perhaps by mistake, perhaps just not being able to immediately see it on the screen and wanting to zero in on it. It can also be useful for you to find out any documents that anyone's marked read only, and you don't need to have manager rights to do that. If you are a manager, you can go one step further and you can look for the documents that are hidden. So if an attorney comes to you and says, uh, my legal assistant hid this document and I can't find it, or I hid a document and she can't find it and I can't find it either. Can you tell me which one I hid or where it is? It's a good way to zero right in on that hidden document. And finally, if, if you want to see which documents are checked out, because maybe once a week you review that and go around to people and say, hey, you need to check this back in. It's been checked out for two weeks now. Or whatever it is, whatever your reason is, you've got slash C for that. So. Summarize, go into find, start a new search. In the owner init, you either put slash H for hidden, slash C for checked out, or slash P for protected. It doesn't matter what else. And you can search specifically. I told you when I said, you know, how to do this, I said leave all the other fields blank. But I could say I only want the ones that were checked out for a certain client, or I only want the ones that are hidden or marked read only for uh, a certain matter or I only want the ones that a certain author did this to. Anything you want, make sure you've got the right profile group, but this slash P, slash C, or slash H in that owner and its field will help you zero in on those specific types of documents that have been flagged in that certain way. Any questions on that, Leanne? There are no questions, Paul. We are just doing really well today, explaining everything perfectly or else putting everyone to sleep, whichever it is. Uh, that's, that's that. Now, real quickly, I want to just tell you that next month we're going to talk about two separate products that are made by other people that hook into World Docs. One is going to be a product called Symphony Suite that takes all your PDFs and makes them readable so they can be searchable. We're going to explain how that works. And we're also going to look at uh, Legal Anywhere, which is a product that creates an intranet or extranet, usually it's used as an extranet, where you can from within World Docs uh, take documents and put them out on the web for authorized external users to view. Co-counsel, opposing counsel, expert witnesses, anybody that's tied to a matter, adjusters, claim reps, anybody that may have an interest in looking at certain documents with relation to a certain matter. Legal Anywhere will let you create a, an external client portal that you can have secure, uh, your clients or other people tied to these matters can have secure access to and can see the documents that you want them specifically to see. So that's what we'll be looking at next week or next month. Uh, in the meantime, everybody have a good afternoon and a good rest of the month. And we will see you in November when it'll be colder. <laughs> good afternoon, everybody. Bye-bye.